body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Dr. Grib was just explaining how he's got some of the uh, organic herbal systems that he's developed from six, seven, eight years ago that are actually growing crystals in them. He was explaining that it's the different... Uh, elements and things that are in there literally uh, alive because uh, they never basically kill it like a real bottle of wine that just gets better uh, as a uh, vintage. Explain that to people. Well, it was based on uh, the the alchemist Paracelsus in the 1600s uh, who really termed the, the spagyric, uh, which is, means to separate and recombine. So what he did was he separated the essential oils from the plant. He separated the the other constituents from the plant and the minerals from the plant. And then he fermented the the plant to create activity in it and then ultimately long story short he added everything back into the plant uh, into the tincture and that was the final tincture and some some sometimes it would take up to 6 months to a year just to make one herbal formula but the, but it was so powerful and so therapeutic that you would only need like maybe one or two drops to get the job done now we've lost all that technology but whenever i was looking at doing herbal extractions. I didn't like the fact that people were just throwing a bunch of herbs and alcohol, Everclear, for example, and letting them sit for a couple of weeks and then bottling them. I went back all the way in history to the Egyptian times, everything, and tried to figure out the best way. That's right. You pioneered using, uh, using glycerin. Yeah, this is, this is all pioneered. I mean, there's nobody. I mean, it would literally take years for someone to come up with this type of technology, but we're basing it on, on old technologies and new technology because they didn't have the type of equipment back then. You use sound yeah. systems and, and all sorts of secret stuff. Yeah, we stuff. use all different Electricity. types of, uh, of high-energy sound pulses and all kinds of stuff that doesn't that's completely cold process, see? You know, even the alcohol tinctures will will t boil them and boil down the herbs I and mean, take them up to high temperatures. That's how you keep it uh, uh, cold so pressed. We, yeah, we keep all the temperatures under 100 degrees usually during the whole extraction processes and everything. So, I mean, it, but it can still take up to six months sometimes just to do an extraction and keep it in its high. No, no, we have trouble getting enough of it because you guys will sell no right. wine until it's time. Right, exactly. So... So that's the that's the process of ours. So that it actually gets stronger with time. And what I foresee in the future is that you could have an herb that was made in 2009 uh, go on auction for hundreds of dollars, as opposed to an herb made in 2014. Because sure, because before I pulled the trigger, I had the test bottles, a whole bunch of them, and I was and 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 I was like, man, over time they got stronger. And then when we got the big stuff, and I said, this isn't as strong. And the stuff that's been there for a month, now it's strong. And it's getting stronger. I mean, so I guess it does change like wine. Right, it does. It does. So, I mean, that, the, the way I see the herbal extraction industry going is that the fact that they're going to be producing and holding a certain amount back, just like the wine industry, you know, from 2008 wines, 2009 wines. What I hear now, actually, is that people, as an investment, are buying pre-2010 California bottles of wine because that was pre-Fukushima you know, now, personally, in my opinion, I think most of the stuff is contaminated over there. So eventually, one day, let's say if California is uninhabitable because of the Fukushima, you know, somebody might have a 2010, 2009 bottle of wine that was grown in California. You know, that would be a good investment because it's going to get better with age. So Amazing. We're developing some other products together as well. I appreciate you coming in. We've got an hour till the show's over. I've got Ben Swan coming in. If if Anthony or somebody would like to do, sit down with you and go over that whole report uninterrupted for the nightly news, we could air it next week. I know we taped a few reports when you were in here last time. I'm not even sure all those have aired, but uh, if you want to scramble the uh, the uh, X-Wings over there and uh, do a whole report breaking down 
you know, the plan to drug the entire population or something, I think it'd be good to have you run through that concisely and say a 20-minute special report, Dr. Group. Okay. Yeah, what I like to do is I like to just give people the actual factual numbers and statistics of what's going on because that's pretty shocking when you can actually see those numbers. And and not only that, it, it motivates you to do something sure. about it. We're out of time. Give your website out. Globalhealingcenter.com. All right. And you can get all the great products he's developed for us at InfoWarsLife.com. And then you're funding the tip of the spear of the InfoWar. Look, try Survival Shield, and said I and I. Try the Fluoride Shield. Try Super Mel Vitality. All we've gotten is great, uh, rave reviews. I mean, I only sell stuff that's dynamite. It's dynamite. Hi, folks. Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Well, they are moving to block visas of Russian diplomats and personnel moving around the world. Obama signed an executive order to start grabbing their property internationally. This is an act of war. You know, the executive order signed today. Obama has given the speech. This is really a new Cold War. It's absolutely uh, incredible to see all of this unfolding. You know, our guest once got to ask Obama, what was it about the drone program? And uh, we have a, a clip, a, a clip of that we're going to be playing here in just a moment. But I got to tell you, folks, uh, things are just getting crazy. This Ukraine situation is huge. 
And the Crimea has voted, that little sliver of land by Russia, uh, down to the south there uh, to the sea, has uh, voted to join Russia. It's been part of Russia many times in history. And again, I'm not saying Vladimir Putin's a great guy. The point is the West is starting all this. And th th they want a new Cold War. John McCain, in testimony yesterday uh, and today, said that we need to increase defense spending, not cut it, uh, because of the new situation uh, with with Russia. So it is a very serious situation, to say the least, that is unfolding. I want to get into all of this, the future of the media, and so much more with Ben Swan of BenSwan.com. Ben, it's great to have you here, buddy. It's great to be in studio with you, Alex. You were here for the Bitcoin conference. Absolutely. Here for the Bitcoin conference, which is going on here in Austin, and uh, spoke this morning, talking a lot about Bitcoin and capitalism. Look, whether you're a big fan of Bitcoin or not, in my opinion, Bitcoin's a great example of capitalism, and that's what we need to kind of... Um, reinstate in the American public's mind is what capitalism is and how it works and the risks associated with it, as well as the reward. And so regardless of what the cryptocurrency might be or, or virtual currency might be, I think there's a valuable thing that we can learn from that idea of, of uh, you know, how it works. Well, I totally agree with you that it's a good idea to have cryptocurrencies. And I uh, totally agree with uh, competition and currencies. We shouldn't have the private Federal Reserve running everything through their fake dollar uh, but at the same time, I've had concerns about the providence of Bitcoin itself. Mm -hmm. And now we have the CEO found dead in Singapore. Uh, a young American woman who ran the first meta Bitcoin exchange was found dead in her Singapore apartment last week. Police are investigating the unnatural death. And you've got uh, all this stuff, lawsuits firing up around it, Bitcoin exchanges disappearing. Uh, where do you think Bitcoin itself is going? Well, Bitcoin itself, I, I think its future is pretty unclear, right? Will it survive or will it fall apart? Who really knows at this point? Uh, I, I think that as long as the Fed see that it is a viable currency, they're going to try to get involved in it. As soon as they get involved in it, Bitcoin is dead. Uh, but there are other currencies that are popping up at the same time. And so, again, I think the opportunity here is one where we say, look, the idea of having free exchange between people without the government being involved in it is something that is catching on among people. That that's where I think the, the encouraging signs are. And by the way, you know, when Mt. Gox collapsed and people said, oh, this is a sign that it's uh, bad news for Bitcoin. I actually think that was good news for Bitcoin. Mt. Gox was a bad player. They needed to collapse. And so when you have someone who is collapsing because they are not responding well to people or because they're corrupt individuals, you want them out of the marketplace. That's how the market regulates itself without federal intervention. Sure, I just go with my gut and, and, and just the whole history of it and mm -hmm. the shadowiness of it. And, you know, the federal government's trying to develop their own systems right now with MIT and Stanford. Stanford. Right. So again, I'm not against it. Right. And if folks want to ride a bubble up and, and you know back down, that's their business. Sure. I just my gut tells me danger will Robinson. Yeah. Well, and I think I think when you look at at what's happening with Bitcoin right now, as you said, it kind of goes up and down and it's very volatile. Um, and the, the beauty of it being a voluntary exchange, unlike the Federal Reserve note, which is not voluntary, we're all forced into that system. This is a voluntary system so people can get in or get out. And my suspicion is that Bitcoin is just going to be the bridge into a lot of other cryptocurrencies, a lot of other virtual currencies that will pop up. Ben Schwann's our guest in studio. If you don't know who he is, he's both an Edward R. Murrow Award and uh, two Lone Star Emmy Awards. And of course, he's had shows on at different stations across the country, very popular with his reality check uh, on a Fox News affiliate that became popular nationwide. And then when they basically tried to censor him, he left to start his own media organization, BenSwan.com, and is really doing first-rate reporting on basic liberty issues, and that's what's so exciting about it. Look, I can ask a lot of questions, and I got a bunch of news I want to get into with you, but front and center, what's number one on your radar? I'm going to give you the floor for the next seven minutes. Ben Swan, tell us what's on your mind. Well, look, I think obviously this story in Ukraine is a huge story, as you said. And I think what's getting getting missed here, and I think you'd probably agree with this, you know, we have this, this new mantra that we use at BenSwan.com, that humanity is greater than politics. And I think what we're seeing in Ukraine right now is that humanity is not being taken care of here, right? That at the end of the day, whether it's the EU, as you said, the West trying to come in and really with the EU force themselves onto the Ukrainian people. 
force them into an EU system, a fiat money system. They're not looking out for the people in Ukraine. It's about it's about issuing more debt and enslaving more people. And then on the Russian side, I see Putin, like you said, not the best guy in the world. I think he sees an opportunity and it's an opportunity to get in there. And so the people of Ukraine are the ones who at the end of the day are ultimately going to have to decide who their new leader is because you have very powerful forces who are attempting to take over. But don't believe the story that we keep hearing in, in Western media about how the US is just trying to go in and help the freedom fighters. They're not, they're trying to put these people into the EU. You. Well, there's a story up on Infowars.com. Ron Paul, U.S. attempting empire building in Ukraine. Russia already ran the Crimea, the gas lines, the military bases.